Hollywood has the Oscars, gamers have the Game Awards, and we anime fans have <laughs> the annual Crunchyroll Awards. An award show that only gives prizes to shows that absolutely deserve it, and totally does not pick the most mainstream show for every category. I already made a video about 2023 anime, in which I rank a couple on a tier list, but today I thought, why not see what anime are nominated for a whole bunch of categories in the Crunchyroll Awards. I'm going to let you know whether these nominees are valid, what I'm going to be voting for, what anime I think will win, and whether JJK Season 2 will or will not absolutely demolish its competition in every single category imaginable. Anime of the year. Hmm, should I save this one for later to increase watch time? Nah, let's just get it out of the way. There are so many fantastic choices right here, although Bochi the Rock aired in 2022, but we'll just look past that, I guess. Oshinoko took the world by storm. It was a very hyped up release, especially when that opening and the first episode dropped. Bochi was consistently great, really fun, safe show. Chainsaw Man, again for me, a 2022 anime, but very influential, considered to be one of the best anime adaptations understandable that it's here. Villain Saga Season 2 covered my personal favorite arc in the manga so far, and I think the anime adaptation was very well done, definitely deserving to be on this list. Then, Demon Slayer. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Demon Slayer, but when Season 2 was nominated for Best Anime of the Year in the previous awards, you know, I could understand it. But in my opinion, this arc wasn't even that great. And I feel like this sentiment that this season wasn't even that great is shared by many, many people, including myself. I personally don't think it deserves a spot on this list, like, at all. I mean, where is Bleach, Frieden, Heavenly Delusion, Pluto, Eminence in Shadow? It really feels like Demon Slayer is just on here simply because it is a very popular anime and has a large hardcore fan base. Now, another popular anime with a lot of fans is Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Now, this anime definitely deserves to be on this list. The Shibuya arc of Jujutsu Kaisen was hyped up for a long time, and it delivered with amazing levels of quality. If you want to hear my full thoughts, check out this video. In that video, I mentioned that I am going to be voting for JJK in the awards, and you know, I am. I highly doubt it's actually going to lose, by the way, so I don't think my vote will change too much, but it definitely deserves it. I think the only anime that comes close to winning anime of the year is Chainsaw Man, but I think that because JJK is in its second season and is more well established amongst anime watchers, I think this one will win. Best Continuing Series Now, while JJK is one of the best out of all of these options, I think that in this case, I will give bonus points to shows that have been continuing for a long time, since the emphasis is less on anime of the year, but more on anime of a long period of time. This was a tough decision, but I eventually decided to go with One Piece. I think that One Piece for a week-to-week -week show has achieved incredible highs, especially with Gear 5 and the conclusion to the Wano arc. Now, if this was a couple of years ago and AOT was still in its prime in the beginning of Season 4, I would have voted for that one pretty easily. But since I think the hype and momentum for the final episode of AOT had already largely died down before it came out, even though I liked the ending, I will have to go with One Piece. And what are Spy Family and Demon Slayer doing here? I don't know, I'm not even gonna question it. You could have easily replaced those with Bleach and Doctor Stone or something. But anyways, best new series. This one is honestly yes. tough. I like pretty much all of these anime, but I eventually boiled it down to three. Oshinoko, Heavenly Delusion, and Chainsaw Man. Now, Chainsaw Man is the winner for me. It is really unique, it has beautiful animation, and I don't think I even need to elaborate that much. I think most of you will probably agree with me. The other choices are also solid though. I can't blame you if you vote for something else, except maybe Zone 100. I personally don't really get the appeal. Best film. Now, this is the first category in which I haven't seen every single entry. I didn't even know there was a slam dunk movie, to be brutally honest with you. But I think that an obvious one that is missing here is Miyazaki's The Boy and the Heron. Go check out my video on it, by the way. If that was on here, I would have easily voted for it. Kaguya was pretty good, but I feel like the only correct answer here would be Suzume. Best original anime. Now, I'll have to be brutally honest, I haven't seen a single one of these entries except for Buddy Daddies, okay? Yeah, yeah, you can bash me all you want, but do you seriously expect me, a guy with a job and other stuff to do, to watch... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not watching Akiba Maid War. Like, what even is this? So since Buddy Daddies is the only series I've watched, even though I haven't even finished it and honestly don't really plan to, I will be voting for that, but yeah, this is a sad category. Weren't there any other options? 
Now, even though everything is subjective, the best animation is a really, really subjective category. A lot depends on what you value in animation. Is it detail, impact frames, speed, fluidity? Honestly, no series on this list is really quote unquote perfect. Every series has their bad qualities in terms of animation. Chainsaw Man and Demon Slayer make use of some CGI, which occasionally doesn't look too good. AOT had less action for it to be fairly compared to the others. So I'll go with JJK. Because even though some episodes weren't finished due to time constraints, you can't deny that when looking at the number of fights this season had and looking at the overall quality of the animation, JJK really shines in this regard. I would put Mob Psycho in second place as I've always enjoyed the rough edge this style of animation had. Best character design is a weird one in my opinion, like some entries I don't even understand. Why is Oshino Ko on here? Those character designs are quite akin to ordinary anime character designs. I think that JJK has some good designs with some standouts being all of the Disaster Curse Spirits, Toji, Nanami, but out of all of these, Chainsaw Man takes the cake for me. Chainsaw Man has some of the most iconic characters in all of any manga, and what I appreciate about them is that they look quite simple, yet are immediately recognizable. I think that an obvious entry that is missing here is Bleach, like come on, Bleach has some of the sickest, most creative and drippiest character designs ever. Now, I've always seen Best Director as a bit of a weird topic, really because for a regular anime watcher that participates in the anime awards, I don't think they will know nor care about who to pick. I however do feel that, as someone who has read the manga of Chainsaw Man, Ryu Nakayama, the director of Chainsaw Man, had a very clear vision in mind and conveyed that vision in a very unique manner. But again, if you haven't read the manga from all of these entries, how are you supposed to know what constitutes a well-directed anime? Best Cinematography This Ladies to me goes hand in hand with Best with Direction. Hands. It's also not something I really pay a lot of attention to, but I do remember Chainsaw Man having some outstanding camera work, some movie quality shots, so I'll vote for that one. Best Art Direction encapsulates color, style and design. For me, this one's obvious. It's JJK. I really enjoy the unique style that JJK Season 2 has. It is a big step up from Season 1. JJK also uses colors very effectively to enhance the atmosphere. Take Gojo being illuminated by the gold golden light while fighting Toji for example. Best Romance Now I'm not the biggest fan of most romance anime simply because they all feel kind of similar and not really relatable since they all take place in like fucking high school or something. Therefore I haven't watched every one of these but out of all of these I did kind of enjoy Insomniacs After School. It was cute, it was relatively unique so I'm voting for that one. Now, best comedy is a really, really subjective topic. All of these options are honestly quite solid. I mean, Spy Family may be kind of a basic show, but the humor is pretty good in my opinion, and the cruise ship arc definitely features some of the best humor out there. My vote is going out to Bochi though. I think it tackles the topic of anxiety and loneliness in a clever, inventive, and funny <laughs> manner. And even though I can't relate to that specifically, I still really enjoyed the jokes in the show. Best action. For me best action and best animation often go hand in hand because the fluidity of the animation often matters most when scenes are fast paced. Now while Bleach and One Piece are also great options, I don't think the action is better nor is the focus point when comparing to something like JJK and Chainsaw Man. My personal vote is going out to JJK again since the battles not only were a visual spectacle but highlighted the pure insanity and chaos of the Shibuya incident. Best fantasy. For best fantasy, I think that world building is very important. How well established is this world? How creative is it and its inhabitants? Does it feel real yet distant? The show that answers all of these questions with full marks is Hell's Paradise. Yes, while definitely not my favorite show of the year containing many flaws, the strange island filled with religion and symbolism where the main characters search for the elixir of life has always fascinated me for some reason. It's wonderfully immersive, bursting with the creativity of Yuji Kaku. Best drama. Okay, hear me Hold out. Up. This might be unexpected, but honestly, I feel like Vinland Saga is the right answer here. Let's have a look at the description for drama that Crunchyroll provides. These anime convey something about the human experience. Okay, they compel them to invest deeply into the characters and their stories. Now, I think that Vinland Saga Season 2 does this exactly. It places Thorfinn into a different environment, an environment with regular people, and forces Thorfinn to find ways to adapt to interact with them and grow as a person. Best slice of life, it's Bochi, I am not even going to elaborate. Best main character is probably my favorite category. This year we have some outstanding options. Denji, Mob, Aaron, Luffy, Thorfinn, I honestly don't think you can go wrong with any of these. And what is this? I don't see Tanjiro on here? 
oh my god the judges have blessed us with a relatively good selection this year i would personally switch hitori for someone like sid but that's just me while Aaron and Luffy are in my top 10 main characters of all time, when just looking at this year and what journeys these characters have had in 2023, I think Thorfinn has come the furthest. Season 2 showed us Thorfinn in a drastically different light, and Thorfinn managed to stay true to himself until the very end. This season presented us Thorfinn at his most complex, his bravest, yet with a hint of uncertainty. While Thorfinn is not my number 1 main character of all time, he certainly does come very close. Best supporting character is also very interesting. I think I know what people are going to be voting for. All of the JJK fangirls are for sure going to be voting for Gojo, while all Chainsaw Man sims are going to be voting for Power, which I by the way completely understand. Both are phenomenal characters. I however am going to vote for my boy Regan. Regan is one of the most endearing and realistic characters in Mob Psycho, and I think that his humanity makes him relatable to so many people. Must protect at all costs is a bit of a weird category. I mean, who really gives a shit about this. I guess I have a soft spot for animals though, so pochta it is. Best anime song. Okay, all of these are bangers. Work is probably the most underrated opening of the year, Kickback was hard, and Idol was even in my Spotify wrapped top 5. I mean, what can I say? It goes hard in the gym, okay? The only one I'm missing here is Specials though. It was a highly influential song that I saw everywhere, and if it was on the list, I would have probably voted for it. Idol, however, is fantastic, so I'm voting for that one. Best score. Now, as much as I like Chainsaw Man's often experimental music, as well as Oshinoko's songs, I think Attack on Titan is my answer here. I have always thought of Hiroyuki Sabano as a legendary composer, and he did not disappoint in this final episode. With a blend of original pieces and remixes of old classics, Attack on Titan absolutely deserves this category in my opinion. Best opening sequence is kind of redundant, as my answer is the same as the best song category, Idol sweeps pretty easily with a better song and visuals. Now, best ending was a harder one. Every single one of these entries has a good song and good visuals. Now, while the visuals and song both matter, for me, I think the song is slightly more important. That's why I'm not voting for Chainsaw Man, as while this ending had the coolest visuals, I didn't like the song as much as some of the other ones. Eventually, I went with Oshinoko again. And damn, you gotta appreciate the effort of the team behind the anime for having such an impressive selection of music, which is of course important when you're having an anime about idols and singing but yeah best japanese voice actor is quite an easy one it's mayumi tanaka i mean i just find it fascinating that at her age of 69 she's able to absolutely crush luffy's role her voice is always bursting with so much energy and vigor and finally we arrived at the best english voice artist performance now i don't watch dubs so <laughs> i don't really know who to pick i guess we'll select bleach since i haven't picked it for any of the previous categories and it definitely deserves some love now, I have one complaint, and that is that I'm missing some categories. First up, Best Antagonist. Bleach and JJK would be pretty strong contenders for this one. Also, Best Fight. I swear we had this category in previous years. And lastly, this is more of a joke, but I would still unironically like to see it, and that is the Best Memes category, which JJK would easily sweep. So, that was it. Surprisingly, although I gave JJK Anime of the Year, it didn't literally sweep all of the other categories. The list is honestly pretty balanced. But no, seriously, I think that 2023 has been one of the best years of anime so far. We got so many bangers, of which most did not even get nominated for the awards. And speaking of the awards, I think that most nominees, contrary to previous years, were actually solid for once. Now we just pray that they don't choose Demon Slayer as anime of the year, and then Crunchyroll and I will be all good. Thank you for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.